okay? And what I want to welcome you to, of course, is, is that we're in this Empowered series, which we're in now and we'll probably be in when Christ returns, okay? Uh, I don't seem to have the clicker, but I think that's because you're switching over. Go ahead and go to the Empowered. Uh, empowered is this. It's this idea of... Can I, I'm going to give you a slightly different definition for Empowered and what we're doing right now in this part of our Empowered series. Here's what we're doing. We're trying to get so close to God that he can do through us exactly the same thing that he did through Christ. Remember, Jesus himself said, if you obey me, if you follow me, if you're really after me, God will do more works through you than he even did through me. So that's what we're trying to do. How do you get to that place where you're so close with him that this is what just flows out of you as it did Christ? Now, when we talk about it in closeness to Christ like that, that fits with this sort of mini-series that we're doing inside of the big series, this one on essentials. And I think you will see that in front of you on the chairs. I don't know. I'm hoping somebody's taking a note or two on this. Maybe guys in the back so that we can catch this. But, but the point is, is that the essentials is this brochure that we've been talking about and passing out. And I'm just going to bounce back to our banner because I want you to see these essentials are right here. And what we, well, the reason why we call them essentials is real simple. Our experience, our, our research, and the research that was done by other people at millions of dollars through Gallup and so on indicate something. People that love God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength have a certain commonality in what their life looks like. And it's these six things, these six essentials. It's not so much that you do these in order to get close to God, even though if you do them, you will get closer to him. It's more that when you're in love with him, these things just flow out of you in a very natural and real way. And so we talk about Sunday church and small groups and serving and devotionals and threefolds and outreach. And today we're going to focus in on devotionals. And if you don't know what a devotional is, let me make it really simple for you. It's spending time with your best friend, God, particularly in his word and in prayer. Now, here's why we need to be talking about this or doing what we're actually going to do today, which is not a lot of talking, so that's nice. But here's what we're going after. When I say spending time with God and his word, people say, when I say do your devotionals, it means read your Bible and pray. Here's what people hear, or here's what people's experience is. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands on this, but if we did, it would be shocking to you. Then This is a church that really goes after God. I mean, whether you're a brand new believer or whether you've been that one for 20, 30 years, the point is this church really goes after God. But still, if I were to ask for a show of hands of the number of people who cannot say, when I open the word, it just comes alive to me. When I read it, God talks to me. God transforms. You see, what God says about the word is, is God breathed. And that it's sharper than a two-edged sword. And it'll abide between spirit and bone and marrow. And between soul and spirit. And it will get in there and it'll change everything about you. And what most people do when they're reading it, read it like a book and they can't figure out why it's not alive to me. And again, if I, ask, if I asked for a show of hands, I said, how many people would just, just to be transparent and vulnerable and so on, and we're not going to do it. But how many people, you know, just think about it. Would you raise your hand or not? And here's the point. See, what people think is they think, I'm the only one that doesn't really get it because Kurt talks about it all the time and everybody else has the word come alive to them. But truthfully, if we were to see a show of hands, it'd be less than half of this, more than half of this room, excuse me, would raise their hands and say, it's not really alive to me. I'm not saying God never says anything. I'm not saying something doesn't happen sometimes. But it's not this, it's not this living word, God talking to me. That's not what it is. It's more of a book, it's impenetrable. In fact, one of the reasons why you know that is because if you're having trouble having that experience with the word, people will very often find a devotional to use. Oswald Chambers, uh, he, um, God, Jesus Speaking, is it, what's the name of that one? Jesus Calling. You know, a daily devotional, which are awesome. I, I highly recommend you read a devotional, but always understand something. When you're reading a devotional, you're reading what somebody else got from God out of that. And yes, that'll speak to you too, and in a way that'll make you understand, oh wow, the word really is alive. But wouldn't it be better if that word was alive to you? Living. Wow, God's speaking to you. So, that's part of it. The other part of it is when prayer, we would have the same kind of a thing happen. If I asked how many people in this room, when you pray, it is a conversation with your BFF, best friend forever. 
How many people pray in a way that it is completely interactive and communicative, communicating? It's just back and forth, just like if you were sitting at Starbucks with your best friend. See what I mean? And if I said how many people are experiencing that, again, and again, less than half of the hands would go up. Because people don't experience that. What they do is they pray, and they, they have this list, and they're praying for their mom and their dad and their spouse and their kids, if they have them. And, you know, they're just praying for their job. And, they're, you know, they're praying, and they have some needs, and they're praying them. But it feels like very much a one-way street, and you don't hear and interact. It's not BFF conversation. So here's what I want to say. Now, I want you to look at this, look at this and I want you to see something. See, the irony of that is, if you look at all these six values, I th they're all critically important. They're all essentials. But if you looked at them, what's the most important single one and why? It should be obvious. <laughs> what would it be? Now, why would it be devotionals, though? Yes, and there's a deeper way to say active communication. What is it? That's your relationship. When God made us, what did he make us to do? To serve him? Not really. That's something that we do naturally as a response to his love and creator status and so on, you know. I mean, we're thankful. But, but why did he make us? He tells us right at the very beginning of the Bible. In the cool of the day, he was walking with Adam and Eve. He just wants to be with them. He just wants to have this actual, genuine relationship. And of all of those values, the one that speaks it the most is devotionals. That's the one where you should be in just BFF, communication, love, relationship with God. Which is why we put it at the lower left. I want to show you something here. You guys, you guys know what a cornerstone is? Right? You, you do, because we don't really build houses this way anymore, because now they're all brick and stick, and you know. But if you're building a big building, you, you do a great big cornerstone that you put exactly right, and you, you make sure you get that one right, because if you do, then everything else you do builds off of that cornerstone, and it's squared up, so you end up with an actual square building, and it's lined up. See what I mean? And here would be a church from, I think it's 1923, otherwise that's 923, and I don't think there was a Presbyterian church in 923. But, but you see that, you see the cornerstone here. And that, it, and that literally was for building purposes, not to show. They put it there because then everything lines up off of the cornerstone. It's the first thing you do to get everything else right. Now I want to tell you, that's what devotionals are. There's two, there's, there's, you see how there's two different lines here, an upper line and a lower line? Consider that to be above surface and below surface. Above surface is public. Sunday church. We come and we fellowship together. That's a public thing. Small groups. Again, not as big as church, but still it's a very public thing. Serving. A very public thing. You're serving, helping people, making a difference in their life directly like this, right? Now when you go to the lower line below the surface, we, I want you to think of those as personal more private. Devotionals. Threefold, sure you're doing them with somebody, but let me make it clear. Your threefold ought to be a place where you can talk about things that you couldn't talk about in a small group. You shouldn't. Threefold is a place to really process what's going on in you and to help other people with what's going on with them. So there is some, right? And then you go to outreach and you say, wait a minute, Kurt, outreach, that's all public. Wait, come next week. If, if you've ever been afraid to evangelize, come next week. Because next week I'm going to talk to you about what God means outreach to be, and it is going to take, it's going to make it the most natural, easy thing that you've ever done in your life. I'm telling you, no matter what, what training or not, or anything else, it's just what God has in mind of what real outreach is is so different than what we think. But the bottom line is, is of all of those, you see where devotionals is supposed to, cornerstone is one metaphor, but wellspring is another one. If you get devotional right, if you get the relationship right, then everything else you do, the Sunday church, the small group, serving, outreach, everything else you do in your life gets lined up properly. Do you see it? So that's why devotionals are so important. And so we're going to do something today. And I told you that we're going to do this in the weekly update. So, uh, you know, if, anyway. But, but what we're going to do today is I, I want us to do, I could stand up here and talk to you about what a devotional is and have done so. What would you say? If you've been here the whole time I've been here, probably a hundred times. You know what I mean? Is there anything I talk about more than devotionals? No. Why? Because I think it's the most important thing. I think it's cornerstone. But the, but the thing I'm really trying to get across today is, is 
I just really went to the Lord and I said, how do you want me to communicate it this time? <laughs> and what I felt like he said was, is, I don't want you to communicate it. I want people to experience it. I want people to feel it. And the, and the image that I have in my mind is riding a bike. I, I could bring a bike up here and I could describe everything about that bike to you perfectly. And I could even hop on it and I could show you what it looks like to ride. And then I could do videos and I could do all kinds of, I could show you the physics of it and everything else. But here's the key to riding a bike. You do not know how to ride one until you get on one. You cannot learn it any other way but getting on it. Because there's that weird thing, right, where you're all scared, but you start to move and everything, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, this is like, this is totally different than what I thought. But now that I feel it, I know what this is, right? And once you know what it is, do notice something. You can ride any other kind of bike. You can ride a little bike or a big bike or a mountain bike or a road bike or anything. You can. Once you know how to ride a bike, you know how to ride a, every bike, right? You may like a certain kind of bike more, but the bottom line is, is what we're trying to do today is, is I want you to feel what it is like to have God be talking to you, to have you be talking to him. I want you to feel what it is like to be in this interactive communication, interactive love relationship with him and have him talking to you. So now I want to say something. If you're visiting today and you don't know the Lord, please hang in here. If you'll just do what I say, I think you're going to find something shocking. I came to the Lord not because I was in desperate need and cried out to the Lord. I came to the Lord because I said something to him and I discovered somebody was listening. Big shock. If you hang in here today, you're not only going to hear somebody listen, you're going to hear somebody talk. And you're going to discover about God. If you're here today, and you're really good at this devotional stuff, when, when I talk about interactive word and the words, God talking to you through the word, and you go, I totally understand that, and I totally have this relational communication prayer, BFF relationship with God in prayer, and all that kind of stuff. If you have that, awesome. Would you just do me a favor? You're going to get to get, spend some time with God today. Right? I'm going to ask you to do it the way that we do it. You may do it some other different way. That's fine. I don't care as long as you're getting to that place where it really is God. Now, if you're like most people in here, the Bible is a little more opaque than you'd like it to be. You'd like it to be more God talking to you than you reading a story that you don't quite understand. And if you would like your prayers to be a genuine conversation, then I want you to commit now. I want you to ask the Lord to do this now. So that's what we're going to pray for right now. Who's our prayer? Ed Bechtold, what a perfect person to have pray for this. Ed and Babette, of course, do our Tuesday Night Live prayer. Uh, Ed is a great prayer, genuine relationship with God. Ed, lift up uh, the sermon, of course, and that people would really hear God today. Okay? Lord, we thank you that you are faithful to us and that you have good things in store for us. So open our hearts and our minds, our ears to hear, receive, and, and live out your word today. Um, we ask you to uh, bless, let's see, I'm trying to think of another church close by here. <laughs> Lord, I, I just ask that you um, bless the neighborhood um, church and continue the work that you want to do there. Mature your body and use them to reach people that are place in their lives to bring you to bring to you amen in jesus name we pray amen. amen a lot of wisdom in that guy at neighborhood just right down here in the corner I like him a lot okay now there's more than one way to do a devotional so i already kind of hinted at that i want to make it clear i'm going to suggest to you one way that we're going to do together as a group but the bottom line is that's not the only way to do it Okay, there's all kinds of other ways to do it. There are some common elements to it, though, and we're going to touch on those as we go through. But bottom line is, right now what I need you to do is, I need every single, look, at the, the whole sermon is about this. So, you know, I know some people are a little hesitant to do anything I say, and that's fine. But, uh, but would you just, if you don't have a bulletin in front of you, which is one of these, You'll need a bulletin, you'll need a pen, and you'll need this flyer that says Devo's on it. You'll need your own copy. You probably have a copy in your packet, but each individual will need your own copy. Now, there's pens in front of you, okay? So would you just raise your hand right now if you don't have this, and the ushers are coming forward? Wow, that's going to be a lot of people. So thank you guys for getting that into people's hands, okay? 
All right, you're going to want a pen, a bulletin with a blank back, and one of these flyers, okay? Wanda, would you make a note? We, when we do this, why don't I just put them in the chairs? Wouldn't that be easier? You know, I don't want to waste paper, though, so help us work through that, okay? We want to get this right, okay? Now, I'm going to give this a second, okay? I need a pen, too. Can I get a pen? Okay. Flyer, bulletin, and pen. What? The Devo one is not in a packet? Okay, you guys, this is serving from last week or two weeks ago. You got to look on there and make sure it says Devo. Does it say Devo? You got to have the one that says Devo. You guys, could you grab a bunch of Devos? Apparently, we didn't quite get the packets just right. Oh, they're different on both sides, hopefully. You need the one that says Devos on it. Raise your hand if you don't have that one, okay? Okay, sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. I, I apologize for the mistake, obviously. Okay, keep your hands up, okay? Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm just going to start going again, yeah. We, we, there's, there's some more over here. Did everybody get them? Everybody pretty much good? Okay, keep going. All right, okay. We have enough, so don't worry about that. We'll get them to you. Keep your hands up if you, there's somebody in the very back there. All right, sorry about that long period of time right there. Bruce, right to your left there. Right to your left, thank you. She might need a Devo thing. <laughs> Well, we kind of blew this, didn't we? All right. I'm going to go ahead and dig in just because I, I, uh, I really don't want to lose too much time on this. Okay? All right. Now, here we go. When we're looking at this Devo, again, I, I want you to remember that there's more than one way to do a Devo. But again, uh, uh, looking at this slider right here, the first thing that I want you to see is I want you to understand that there are Everybody, you can read your own Bible your own way, but I recommend highly something. I recommend that you have a little old and a little new in your reading every day. Why? Mo a lot of people will pick up the Bible and say, I'm just going to read from page one and read it all the way through. Well, you know, four years from now, five years from now, and you get done. It's just, can I just tell you something? The Old Testament has life breathed into it from the new. The New Testament has, is enriched by the old. When you read a little old in the context of a little new and a little new in the context of a little old, when you read them like this, you get much more out of either one. So I recommend them both, and you'll end up reading the New Testament about three times for every Old Testament that you'll read, and I think that that's just fine. Okay? And we do something here, and guys, go ahead and switch over. I just want to show you, we do something in order to do that kind of reading, which we call SOAP, and this is one way of interactively working with Scripture. If the word does not come alive to you, make sure that you try soap. Because I'm telling you, this is the easiest, fastest, best way I've ever seen for making the word come alive and become interactive. So here's our website. Do you see that? And I think people still don't know this either. You understand the top bar on a website, on our website, is the normal stuff somebody visiting the site might want. Media, you know what I mean, stuff like that. The bottom bar down here... The second menu bar, what that's all about, that's our discipleship resources. That's for you. Okay? So you'll see there's the latest message, Sunday morning church. There's small groups. There's serving. Then there's devos and soap and devos and soap. Devo, soap is really under devos, but we have a separate soap thing. So if you click on soap, see, here's what you get. You see those five 
red things. And, and you can do this. You can go down to where it says download soap schedule. Right now, in your packets, you have this, which is the new soap schedule that we're passing out today. And you can take this and do what Julie does. You can just pop it in your Bible, and then you just look up the two passages for that day, right? But the, and you'll notice, by the way, it's Monday through Friday, and that's, you know, some people would say, you should do that every day. Here's why I don't do it every day. I get legalistic when I do that. Something happens in me that becomes I need to check the box. It stops being relational for me. So we just give you five. If you want to read more than that, by all means, feel free. <laughs> okay? Whatever works for you. But the bottom line is, is you can do what Julie does, which is take the soap schedule, and she looks it up in her own Bible and reads it in her own Bible. She likes that. She prefers it. Me, I actually do this on my prayer walk, where I just take out my phone. I go to our website. I click on soap. And then go ahead to Monday, you guys. Go, go ahead to Monday to the soap. They already clicked on it. And see, it just comes up. And go ahead and scroll down and let them see. There's the Old Testament passage. Okay, keep going. By the way, we're just headed into Numbers. Numbers is so cool. There are some long lists in there. Sorry about that. But there are stories in Numbers that are some of the best stories in the whole Bible. And then a New Testament passage. See what I mean? And so what you do is, is you read each one of those. Literally, if you were just reading them and that's all you were doing, it wouldn't take you but five minutes. Okay? Now, it wouldn't even take you that long. It would take you about two minutes usually on one of our passages. That one kind of looked long. All right. Go ahead and pop me back, guys, okay? Now, we're going to do a soap right now, but just in order to sort of give you a sense of what that means, what I want to do is I want to I just read this to you, okay? So time, number, there's two things, right? Time in his letter to you, the word. Interactive time with him. That's number one here. So read his word as if God is talking directly to you. Here's the key to that. If you went out to Starbucks... And you and your BFF were talking at Starbucks, and they said something to you, and you never responded, you know, thanks for the coffee. That's not a relationship, right? So the point is, when you're reading the Bible, again, don't read it as a book with a bunch of stories. Read it this way. God is trying to talk to you. In fact, I'm going to do something right now. I'm going to have God read a passage from you from a last week's soap. And I want you to listen to it and listen for a speed bump. What we call a speed bump is something that stands out. Maybe it's just an idea. Maybe it's a question. Maybe it's something weird. Whatever it is, well, God, why would you do that? But again, if, if he's talking to you, if you were at BFF, at, at, you know, and they said something you didn't understand, what would you do? What does that mean? I don't understand that. You just said something. I don't get what you mean by that. Would you please tell me what that means? Now, do that with God when we're reading, okay? But I want, you to, I want to give you one slight example so that you can see this because this is a little foreign for most people. So I got this from one of those machine readers. It's off of a Bible program that I have. So the, the language will be stilted. It's not like Scoresby reading the Old Testament. You know, in the beginning, God. You know what I mean? And it's like so wonderful. It's beautiful. But we're not going to do that one because I wanted to read this particular passage in a particular version, and nobody's recorded that one that I know of. I could, couldn't find it. Okay, so I'm going to let the machine, I'm going to let the computer read it to you, but I want you to hear, this is the, this was the beginning of our soap on Thursday of last week out of Leviticus. God had said, before this one, the, right before this, he had said, what I want you to do is, for six years you can plant and harvest. On the seventh year, Sabbath the land. Do not plant and do not harvest. And then, what he's about to say now is, is if... You haven't planted and harvest. You're asking me, how can I eat? And I'm telling you that I'm going to do a miracle. That's what God's saying. So listen to it. If you want to live securely in the land, follow my decrees and obey my regulations. Then the land will yield large crops, and you will eat your fill and live securely in it. But you might ask, what will we eat during the seventh year, since we are not allowed to plant or harvest crops that year? Be assured that I will send my blessing for you in the sixth year, so the land will produce a crop large enough for three years. When you plant your fields in the eighth year, you will still be eating from the large crop of the sixth year. In fact, you will still be eating from that large crop when the new crop is harvested in the ninth year. Did you hear that? Now, I read that on, on my, you know, my devotional. I read that and I went, we could never do that. 
could you shut the American economy down for one year every seven years? How many of you would like to go on, by the way, a vacation for a full year? How many of you would like to be, have it be a paid vacation? Okay. Do you understand that that's exactly what God is telling us to do? Do you understand that what he's doing is, is that he's saying, I'm going to provide so much for you of produce in the sixth year. It'll not only feed you in the seventh year, it'll feed you all the way through the eighth and even into the ninth. Now let me, now here's what happened in my soap. Watch. See, you have to think about what's being said. It's like a conversation. You can't just passively read and get anything out of it. You've got to interact with it. My first thought was, is you could never do that now. We could never Sabbath here now with our economy the way it is and everything else. But then here's what happened to me as I was talking to God about it. All of a sudden, he brought this to mind. If we actually did try and Sabbath the economy for a year, and God caused the sixth year to be so fruitful, profitable, productive, that it provided for everybody for the next year and even more, how many people would believe that there was not a God? You couldn't say that there was no God, right? Because it's not, that doesn't happen on the first year, the second year, the third year, the fourth year, the fifth year. It's only on the sixth year <laughs> that, you, that you harvest so much that you can live for an entire year and more on it. Now, if that was happening, it would be very hard to say there is no God, <laughs> which makes me want to do it. Which makes me want to say, how do we do it? See what I mean? And now all of a sudden I've got something I want to talk to God about. <laughs> You're the one that ordained this. We're very far from this. How do we do this? See? Now I'm having a conversation with him. Taking up your flyer again. I want you to read the scripture that we're just about to put up. We're going to take about, well, oh, five to seven minutes. You're going to read it, and then you're going to do these things. When you're reading that, look for speed bumps. This is this idea, question, thought, something that comes to your mind, okay? That comes to your mind as you read. The great thing about the Bible is the author comes with every copy. So when something comes to mind, and this is the most key thing I'm going to say today, whenever something comes to mind, ask. Ask. And when you ask, expect him to answer. But how does he answer? Well, go to the next one on the observation. As thoughts come to mind, this is often him answering you. As thoughts come to mind. See, when we say God spoke to me, I think we're waiting to hear, Kurt. Kurt. Right? But, if it, but what I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to understand that the Holy Spirit is what? What's he called? The helper, the guide. And still small, quiet voices very much. It's in here later. But he's the helper. He's the guide. What does that mean? He's, he knows your thoughts. And what he'll do is, is he's directing your thoughts. So when you have a thought, just ask yourself, is that my thought or is that his? An awful lot of people who say that God doesn't speak to them don't understand something. Those thoughts that you're having are not actually yours. They're the Holy Spirit inside of you leading you, guiding you, helping you. Now, I get that you can get subjective on this. I get that you can get off on this. But the truth is, this is just because you can get off on it doesn't mean it's not how God doesn't talk to you. He talks to you. You'll get a thought. You'll get an impression. Discern. Is that from you? Wow, what does that mean then? Interact. Just like you would if you were having Starbucks. I want you to think Starbucks in your mind. Think BFF conversation. Okay? And I want you to let this happen. So that look for an aha moment. It's not just, see, here's what happens. People are reading their Bible and they read about a story or something. They say, oh, that's interesting. But no, if you're thinking that God is talking to you, you're looking for something to come out of it. Something starts to come out of it. Then you ask him. Then a thought comes to mind. Then you work on that thought. Then you ask him. Then your thought comes to your mind. Then you ask him. There will come a point in time when you're having a conversation. If I said to you, I don't understand what you're saying, and then you say it to me, and I'm kind of dense, and so I go, I don't get it still, and then you say it again, and you try, and all of a sudden, what happens? At one moment, I go, oh, aha, revelation. I got it. Ah. Oh, <laughs> oh, I get that. Oh, I understand now. That's when you're done. At least with this part of it, there's more to do. Okay? So what I want you to do now, and like I say, Pam, come on up. Thank you. I'm gonna, we're going to take some time right now, and this is the passage. Now, by the way, I told you something. Remember I said that 
we had determined months ago to do essentials. This is the beginning of that master's level that God is now teaching the disciples. And, and I thought we were going to do all these essentials announcements as just a long announcements. And God said, no, look at the passage. <laughs> look at chapter 9. It's all, all the essentials are right here at the beginning of their master's program. Now, I want to show you how much that's true. This is right where we are. One day, Jesus left the crowds to pray alone. What does that sound like to you? He's doing a devotional. <laughs> He's going to talk to God, right? He's going to interact and talk to him. So what we're going to do is we're going to soap. We're going to take just the S and O. Don't do the A and the P yet. Just do the scripture, read the scripture, look for speed bump, talk to God about it. Some people, by the way, will find it helpful to write things down as the, that they, help, they process better when they write things down. Some people do it in their heads. I, I won't tell you what I do because I don't want to influence anybody. But, but do, do whatever is easiest for you, but kind of capture some thoughts at some point in time because you're going to want to be able to come back to it in a minute because of what we're going to do, okay? So take some time right now. Uh, here comes the passage. I'm not even going to read it to you. Read it yourself because I don't want to hit speed bumps and skip over them so that you miss them. So read it, look for speed bumps, go for it. I'm going to do the same thing.
just for timing's sake, just raise your hand if you're roughly there. Let me give it one more minute then. That's quite a few. It's pretty impressive. I've read and taught that passage. I, honestly, it could actually be a hundred times between reading and teaching. Uh, I just got something brand new out of it. I got something out of it I've never seen before. I might share it, I might not. It depends on how good what you guys share is. So I want to hear some people. I wanna, I'm going to leave it up here so that we can see it. It, always remember something. The speed bump is individual to you. It's fingerprinted. It's unique. Okay? We're not looking for right answer, wrong answer. There is no right, wrong answer. There's what God says to you. Right? A hundred times I've done that passage, God's told me all kinds of everything's through it. Okay? So go ahead. Raise your hand. Who wants to just stand up and give us a little, you know, the speed bump that they hit and what it said? That's awesome. Okay? Thank you, VJ. Go ahead. Stand up. Give your name. I guess the speed bump for me would be um, Jesus knows who he is. Obviously, his disciples, Peter, knows who he is. Jesus can give a prophecy about how he's going to be treated by the religious leaders of his time. Why, you know, he knows who he is. Why is he curious who the oh, people think good. he is? Um, yeah. I mean, why, why does he not know that? And I know why. I care what people think about me, but why at that point does Jesus even ask the disciples, who do the people think I am? Why, why, why does that matter? Yeah. Now, when you pressed into God, did you get an answer to that? Not yet. Okay. Good. Okay. Awesome, Jeff. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm Monica, um, and I don't think I'm going to phrase this quite right, so just bear with me. Um, but it's like, Jesus was asking the disciples, what does everybody think I am? And then he asked, who do you think I am? Um, and it just kind of made me realize that I have to come to a decision of, do I believe what the world thinks Jesus is? Do I believe that he's the mean old person who oh, doesn't want you to have any fun? <laughs> or do I want to keep on pressing in to God and find out exactly who he is um, and what he wants from me? I love that. That's awesome. Who else? Okay, right here. Okay, was that you, Alex? I saw another hand over here. So come around to Alex too, Adam. Okay. Corey. So what I thought You've got to say it again because we didn't quite catch it. It's Corey, but go Corey, ahead. Corey, yeah. Okay. What I thought of when he asked his disciples uh, who he thought that he was, that he, I believe he probably knew. He had been spending a lot of time around them. He could tell how they treated him and uh, what not, but I believe that maybe he wanted them to confess uh, with their mouths that he, who he was, and that it was a benefit for them Amen. Uh, to confess that and to grow their relationship. Amen. Okay, uh, Alex, what was the speed bump that you hit? Um, okay, <laughs> I'm Alex. Uh, for me, it was honestly what other people are thinking. They say, you're John the Baptist or Elijah or some ancient prophet rising from the dead. Does that, like, happen all the time? Why would they just not think he's a new prophet? <laughs> I mean, all right, so that's a speed bump, and then what did you do? Um, I'm, I'm not sure on the answer yet, but I think it has to do with how he does rise from the dead. You know, okay. it's, it's something, something to do with the importance. It's, it's good. I want to get somebody who got a speed bump and an answer. I want us to see how God answers, okay? Let's, let's come over here. Or did you guys already have somebody? Who, who was the other hand that went up? I'm sorry. Okay. So first here, and then we'll go to you. Okay. So, all right. And give your name, of course. I know who you are, but. I'm Kristen. And the speed bump for me was um, where Jesus was saying not to tell anybody who he was. And I had always thought, because the next part where he's talking about how he's going to be killed, that it had to do with that, that he didn't want that time to come sooner than it was supposed to 
but when I pressed in on that, I felt that it was that he didn't want people hearing who he was. He wanted them to experience who he was their own way and to see who he was themselves that would be deeper and more meaningful. Now, I love that one. That's the same one that I got on. It was, it was when he said, I don't want you to tell him. And I went, well, I know, because you, you didn't want him to kill you beforehand, and if they said it, and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, I felt like the Lord said, no, that's your speed bump. Stop on it. And all of a sudden, I, I was reading that, and I went, he's going to be rejected by many people. He's going to be killed on the third day. He's going to be raised from the dead. And all of a sudden, I went, Jesus isn't going to tell people who he is. He's going to let people decide who he is. And the people who are going to need to tell them who he is are the people that are deciding right now. That's us. That was the, God just took me. You see what I mean? You see, the first thought was, why didn't you let him tell anybody? And I had an initial thought. But I realized that wasn't quite the right one. And so I pressed in a little bit more. And I went, well, why are you saying that? Don't tell anybody. And then you're telling people to suffer. I know that you know you're going to suffer, so that doesn't stop that. And the timing and everything else. But all of a sudden I went, what he's, the, the key to it is, is that he's going to be killed. And that these are the people that are going to need to proclaim him. And then all of a sudden I went, oh my gosh, that's what you're doing with me. You want me to decide who you are. And you want me to be the one. Rather than you telling people who you are, you want me to tell people. Go ahead, let's do another one. Where are we? Kimberly, okay. Speed, do it, do it in this order if you would, please. What's a speed bump? Then what, kind of let people in on process. I'm trying to let people hear this interactive process. Hi, I'm Kimberly Jackson. And um, mine was a little weird. Duh. <laughs> Nobody's laughing. Roll. Don't laugh. Nobody's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> okay, so it was the word crowds. And... Um, no. I, that was my first speed bump. I had several, but this is my first speed bump. Yeah. And so I, as I hit the word crowds, it's like, weird, crowds. He didn't say, you know, it's like, up, as opposed to the single person. Because you know how there's like, when you have a, a, you know, a group of people, there's always, you know, somebody that's going to be like the heckler or whatever. And I'm like, weird, crowds, what about that, God? And, he, and I just kind of heard this like, yeah, and how much do you pay attention to like, there's a whole bunch of people, but one person says this one thing, and you're all fixated on this one person. It's like, really, that's not the opinion of the crowds. The opinion of the crowds is like the general consensus. And I realized, oh, yeah, I really probably focus too much on what maybe one person thinks as opposed to, you know, the general consensus or really the opinion of God. Oh, well, that's nice. Uh, I, I'm not sure where we are. Thank you for all these hands. This is awesome. Uh, you guys pick. Just somebody pick. Okay? I, I guess. Go ahead. Okay. I'm Jenny. A man next time. Okay? Go ahead. Sorry. I'm not a man. No, no. I'm good. I'm good. This is awesome. Every time I stand up, you say that. Just oh. want guys to hear it, too. Yeah, that was <laughs> it's, really it's bad of me, the to timing. Get up. I, get, I forget <laughs> stuff, and then I say it so I don't forget it. That's stupid of me. I'm sorry. Okay. My speed bump was, you are the Messiah sent from God. And, I, and then I went and asked him, well, why didn't you want the disciples to tell anyone? And, and he told me it's mob activity, and he wants people to decide for themselves. And then why did you call yourself the Son of Man rather than the Messiah? And he said, so that to identify with the disciples that I'm a man wow. rather than God the Father. Because to them, wow. that he would really suffer. And then I went from there to what, how do you want me to respond? It was immediately, thank you for taking all of my sin on yeah. and suffering for me. Yeah. So. I mean, that's great. Do you see the process? Okay. Hannah? Or actually, I'm sorry. I said a guy. Sorry. Yeah. I actually said you, it was you a long time ago. I'm so sorry. Go ahead and stand up. My name is Erskine. Okay, sorry, uh, Erskine. Go ahead. Uh, no problem. Uh, what stuck out to me was the same thing with her. It's basically the son of man must suffer many things. It's funny because me and my wife, actually, that was our, our same speed bump at the same time. Wow. What God showed me with it, and he was like, listen, the son of man is basically what? Flesh. The son of God is what? Spirit. So not everybody's going to see him in the spiritual realm. So oh, they have wow. to see him in the natural realm. That's so awesome. in order for us to really know exactly what we're going to go through, we have to see how he went through. 
So when we see him as an example, we automatically know what we're going to go through. So you can't say I'm better than Jesus because I don't need to go through all that. <laughs> Erskine, you can talk anytime. <laughs> that was great. So it was everybody's. Okay. Oh, you got, okay, go ahead. My name is Michael. It's my first time here today. Nice um, to have you here, Michael. I had an interesting experience just now. Jennifer asked the same question about why does he not want anybody to know, and I answered it the same as we heard the answer from over here. So okay. that was kind of confirmation. My speed bump was why is he suddenly first talking to the disciples and then suddenly switching to third person? Wow. Go ahead. Do you so have an answer? The answer was... Well, there's a dichotomy, or actually there's three in one there. And wow. at one point, he's talking to the disciples. He's asking, well, who am I as a person? Who do people say I am? And then he switches. It's no longer Jesus, the person, the man talking. It's God talking through Jesus. Wow. You can talk too anytime, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I want somebody who hasn't ever heard from the word like this before. I want a, a new one. We'll, do, we'll go ahead and do Hannah. But somebody, you know, if you're nervous, we love you. This is family, okay? So if you've never, if this was a new experience for you to get a revelation, I've got to talk to you through the word, we'd like to just talk to you, and then we're going to move on. Go ahead, Hannah. Hello, I'm Hannah. And um, it was kind of the last line where it says, he will be rejected by the elders, leading priests, and the teachers of religious yeah. law, and then he oh. will ra be raised from the dead. And so... For me, right now, I'm going through probably the hardest time in my life. It's okay. Take your time. And so, <clears throat> for me, it was a reminder that, you know, <clears throat> even Jesus, who is this holy being that came to oh, earth. Wow that deserves to have heaven on earth, you know, that even yeah. he, yeah. you know, suffered, and he, sorry, yeah. that he really knows what we go through, because he came to earth, and he experienced what we experience, and so it's like the ultimate, he can have the ultimate, I think it's sympathy when you can, you yeah. know what someone experienced, and yes. so to empathy. me, Empathy. Feel it, yes. Yeah, he, he knows. He knows what I'm going to, yeah. through. You know, that I'm not, I'm not in heaven. I'm in earth, you know. And yeah. it's okay for me to go through this. He knows. He's there with me. And in the end, with the line of that, you know, he'll be raised from the dead, that he is really the one that's going to raise me from this. Yeah. And so if we were I having a conversation it. at Starbucks, here what I, here's what I would do with you right now. I'm going to do it right the whole congregation. Just, Lord, in Jesus' holy and precious name, I ask you that, that as Hannah casts her cares on you, that you would care for her in a way that she could start ministering from where she's been ministered to. That that same empathy that you feel that comforts her would become something that through her would begin to comfort others. And that she, others that are going through difficult times and not understanding that they would come to know that there's a God there who's holding them in his arms and bringing them into incredible places where not only are they healed, but they're also able to minister that healing, your presence, who you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Hannah. There was one person I asked who's never heard from the word before. Okay, is there anybody that is willing to stand up and talk about that? This was the first time that you ever went, wow. Okay, go ahead. My name is Carrie, um, and I got stuck up on the part where it says, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say you are one of the other ancient prophets risen from the dead. And I got stuck up, and I was like, well, why do they all have different opinions on who you are, and why do you not want them to know who you really are, like Peter knows? And I said, because people know who he was the whole time, but... They just didn't know how to put a label on it and that Jesus really is all those wow. things because he is God. 
and yet he's the man version. So Jesus is actually all those things because Jesus is us, and he represents who we should be one with God. Yeah, that idea that it is, you know, something was burning within us, right? Like the two apostles when they're walking with Jesus, and, and then all of a sudden he opens, they don't know who he is, and all of a sudden he opens their eyes, and they're going, wasn't something burning within us? Can I just tell you, that's a perfect one for us to segue now, because this is what this process is about. Did you, did you feel that? The part about reading interactively is you're the one that starts it. You're the one that catches something. Now, the Holy Spirit's the one that's leading it. So he's catching the speed bump, but then you're entering into a process with him. You're not just reading it as a book to get information out of. You're reading it as God speaking to you. He wants to say something, and if you will talk with him as a BFF at Starbucks, then you'll start realizing that he's speaking to you in your thoughts. He's speaking to you in, in these, you see what I'm saying? You, oh, oh, wow, okay, I got it, and then things will start coming. Now, what we, if we were in a devotional right now, you would take that thought, or any one of these other thoughts, and you would move right into relational prayer. I need to do a little business before we can do this. It's very quick. I just want you to catch two other things here. Down here, application and prayer. Okay? Application. What's application? Real simple. How does this apply to my life? Take the revelations that you got. Take the revelations that you heard. If one of them spoke to your heart, what I want you to do is, is ask the Lord, how does this apply to me? What am I supposed to do about this? See what I mean? How does it apply to me? And then when God tells you, here's how it applies to you, like for my, for, as my example for what he was saying was, I want you to speak the word. I want you to lead people to me. I want you to, that person that you know, I want you to be able to speak with, this, with me. I want you to do that. So now here's what I do. I go from application to prayer. And my prayer is, is thank you for showing me what to do. And then here's what I always say. Help. <laughs> Because the fact that you're having to tell me to do this, it's not like I didn't know that. But I'm not actually doing it. So help me. I'm asking you to help me. Get me to the place to where I'm actually becoming Christ-like. Okay? So we're going to do that right now. I want you to take a minute. I, this is, we're literally going to take like one minute on this. I want you to just, whatever revelation you had or whatever it is, just just... Get with the, ask him what the revelation is, what the application is, excuse me, and then just pray. So do that for one minute. Now, now that you're praying to him, saying thank you and help me, then like I say, this just rolls right into relational prayer, except that I need to just take two seconds with you and do this. I want you to look down here. At the bottom of that one, it says, I just want you to understand something. The more time you take in letting the word speak to you, the better off, right? But I do want you to see something. People say, I don't have enough time to do a devotional. If you just take the amount of time that you are looking at the scripture and doing an observation and then we're under 10 minutes. So, you know, if you can take longer, great, do. Okay? By the way, I always like to open up with the word rather than relational prayer because there's a lot of noise in the world. There's a lot of other voices in the world. And when I go to the word, I know that I've got the one that is truly God-breathed voice. And so that starts to orient me to what his real voice is so that even in my relational prayer, I hear the right voice. See what I mean? I know the one that's God because it sounds like that one I was just looking at in the Bible. See what I mean? So uh, uh, try to spend at least 10 minutes every weekday. I've already explained that. And the last thing is, is that, you know, do it in the word, not a devotional. You read your devotional too if you'd like. I don't have a problem with that. But here's the point. Gallup told us in the Big Reveal study, and this is the truth. It's the word 
that's sharper than a two-edged sword, able to go between bone and marrow, spirit and soul. It's the Word that's able to transform you. If you read a devotional where somebody else went to the Word and they got that, then yes, it's, it can be valuable, but it's still secondhand. It's not the thing God wanted to say to you. Not that he can't speak through that. But I just want to put it this way. Give a person a fish and you feed him for a day. Read a daily devotional and you're fed for a day. Teach a person how to fish and they feed themselves for the rest of their life. In everything. Okay? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get related to him who wants to help us all the time. So make it the word. Okay? Now... We just pop over to relational prayer and just, just take your thing out and just flip it over, okay? And here's what relational prayer is. It's a two-way, wait a second, let me read it off of here. I can't quite read it there. It's a two-way interactive conversation with God. The kind of thing that would happen with your best friend like we've been talking about. That's what Jesus did and that's what you can do too. We see him praying even publicly sometimes and we see him just having a conversation with God. He's just talking to him, knowing that he's listening and hearing from God at the same time. Save the one-way time to thank and petition for the end. I believe in having a prayer list of things that God has laid on my heart to pray faithfully for. I believe in that. And after I get done with reading the Word and a relational time of prayer, then I pull out my phone and I've got these things and I will pray through, you know, the various things that I'm praying through. And I'll ask the Lord to do these things. But I do that at the very end. And that takes a couple of minutes compared to for me, about an hour on being in the Word and being with God. And let me say, it's this relational prayer time I'm about to talk to you about and the, and the Word. Every sermon I've ever preached in my entire life, every good thought I've ever had has come right out of that. Period. So this is a wellspring of life. So, a couple of tips. God tends to speak to us, not so much in words as thoughts, ideas, etc. We've already talked about that, but here's your still small voice, voice Philip. His still, small, quiet voice often comes as more of an impression. He's in your thoughts. If you're a verbal processor, that's very helpful because it'll sound like him speaking to you because you, you think in words. If you're not a verbal processor, an image maybe, an emotion, a thought, there's just all kinds of different ways of doing it. But the key, and again, is you have to engage the thought process as if it was a conversation as if he said something to you that you're supposed to respond to now with a question or with a comment or whatever. See? Um, always discern, this is the next one, whether a thought is yours or his. The more you do that, the more you learn to hear him. Just always be discerning. And I want to say, soap is an excellent way to learn how to hear his voice. It's like the counterfeit bill thing, right? You really begin to understand what a real bill looks like. Okay? By the way, that's a, not true. FBI people look at counterfeit bills all the time, but... If you fall asleep, uh, this is the next one. If you fall asleep when you close your eyes, I do. If I were to stand up here and we were to take five minutes and I close my eyes, I'd be asleep in about two, okay? So I just fall asleep. So that's why I go on a walk because then I don't fall asleep. And the other thing I do is if I'm, if I'm not moving, I pray with my eyes open. Why? Because I don't fall asleep when my eyes are open. It's hard to do. Try it. It's, it's, it's possible because I've seen people do it right here, but... Yeah. Bottom line, bottom line, interact with him right now. Go from that prayer that you just prayed to him and just move right into a conversation with him. Ask him questions. Expect an answer. He will respond. The more you try, the more you'll succeed. We're going to take about five minutes here. And that's not really enough time, but I'm just prayerful that it is going to be enough for this moment. But I want you to do something. Again, I just want you to take about five minutes, and I just want you to Try and go back to where you were when you had this revelation and just take that revelation now and just start talking to God about all kinds of things. What do you have going on in your life? What's, you know, jobs, health, finances, uh, relationships, whatever it is. Just start talking to him, but ask him questions. Talk to him and expect him to talk back. Do that for just about five minutes.
just let the Holy Spirit guide your thoughts, your conversation. If you're dreaming about something loony, just open your eyes and bring yourself back. see enough restlessness that we're going to go ahead and call it. Um, I just want one or two people. Is there anybody in here that when you were just talking to God interactively that way in prayer, that that's the first time you felt like, oh, wow, I didn't know that was it, and you felt like you were actually hearing the Lord, and this was a new thing for you? in your prayer? Is there anybody in here that would say that and be willing to talk to us about it for a quick second? I want to ask a question or two. Anybody? Everybody? Did, did, did everybody hear from the Lord? <laughs> Do you feel like you did? We'll go ahead and, we'll go ahead and move on. This is what we're doing here, okay? This is this last little section down here. Here, too, in your relational prayer time, the more, the better. Uh, I find I can go... I find if you're under about 10 minutes, it's very hard to really sort of get lost and really be about him. I find it takes time. The word helps me to quiet the outside and the noise. But then I, you know what I mean? It usually takes me more than about... 10 minutes, but I just want to say something. You can do this entire devotional that we've just talked about, soap and this relational prayer, in less than 20 minutes. Now, I don't recommend it when you're in your car and you're distracted, particularly if you've got the radio on. But what I am saying is, is, you know, you can take 15 to 20 minutes at the beginning of your day and just tithe it to him. Give him the first fruit of your day. Read a little of the word. Let him talk to you. Have a conversation with him. Get tuned in to what he feels like. And then, for the rest of your day, you'll talk to him. Because now that you know what he sounds like and you'll know what he's saying to you, it'll, you know, he'll talk to you for the rest of the day and you'll talk to him for the rest of your day. And that'll be the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you and helping you throughout the whole of your day. Not just in your devotional. But this is my recommendation. So the more the better. It's very hard to really enter his presence in less than 10 minutes. We should all talk with God, but give him dedicated time each weekday without other distraction. You'll realize how much he's been saying all along, right? He's been talking to us. So uh, you can go to our website. You can look at the journey or you can start clicking on those discipleship tabs. You can learn a lot more about devos and soap and you'll see sermons on it and all kinds of stuff and reading materials. There's lots of different stuff that we have to help you with this. And also understand, if you want to talk to us about it, do. Let me know. And I'll try and connect you with somebody who's good at this stuff and they can help you to where they can help make the word come alive to you. They can help make your prayers become relational and genuinely communicative. This is the most important thing. This is the most important single thing that we ever talk about. I want to thank you for giving me the time and doing this sort of weird thing of experiencing this. I hope that what has happened is, is that you felt him in a way that you can take that feeling now and start building on it. That's the goal. 
That's what I hope that this time was worth. So Lord, in Jesus' holy and precious name, this body, this family, we come before your throne right now. And what we ask for is, is that you would indeed, in fact, in beauty, that you would cause us to feel, to know, to come to know gnosko intimacy. That you would, we would come to know in the most intimate way your still, small, quiet voice, your presence, the way that you are speaking to us all the time, the way that you're so deeply ingrained. If you are here today and you do not know the Lord, what a perfect time. What a perfect time to say, I want to know you like that more. You can come up afterwards and if this is the first time for you. The bottom line in Jesus' holy and precious name, God, we reach down in front of us and we take this cup and there's 